All right, fellas, this next portion of the talk is basically what's new coming off the dry erase board in the basement. Taking concepts that we've used in the past and applying them to different situations to give us other answers. One of the things that I've, I've been asked a lot about is what about these five, five wide, quick passing teams? I call it guys who fish and throw. It's fishing. It's catch and release. And the way we play defense, sometimes that's not good. And if they're five wide and they're talented, there are certain things that they're going to hurt us with if we don't change some of our concepts. So a couple of our ideas. And guys, these are right now developmental ideas. Sharing that with you new from the dry erase board. Always we want to stay balanced, 33, 33, 33. Um, when I use the word coverage, coverage equals both zone and man with a low and a high hole helper. All right? We may be playing man, but we're not blitzing. The other thing I want to talk about is internal stunts to puncture the foot plant of the quarterback is better than off the edge. These kids, especially the wide split people, okay, where they're catching the ball, taking one step, and they're going through their progressions. We're not going to be able to get there from the edge. What I want to be able to do is I want to make them plant short. I want to make pressure at their front foot or make them move off of rhythm. I want to push inside out. They're throwers. They're not runners. Make them throw off of rhythm. That's my, my, the, the premise of the pressure. Utilizing base defense from a field alignment. Our two coverage that I've initially worked on right now are field 52, which we've been running. Five on one side, two on the other. Maybe from an up alignment. Maybe from an up alignment and field one cut. Our zone pressure concepts that I'm working on, one is called field back or two hole which is very developmental right now, and double cross sink three hot. We like the man pressures of Stifler and Tiger because they puncture at the feet. Now, some of these things we've used at different times, I'll take you through this. All right, here's field 52 and one cut. Base defense, robber coverage of the field, and we may want to play number two free safety as a backer. What do I mean by that is if we have a good backup free safety and we're playing a five wide team, if our backer is not as good in coverage, we may take our backup free safety and let him match up as the other backer. So when we're matching up, we're matching up with speed. We're matching up with speed. We want to play cloud coverage or cover two to the boundary. Play 52, and when strength goes to the boundary, check 22 and play cloud all the way across. And play cloud all the way across. Now, let's say right now we're seeing four by one. We're seeing four by one. We are in matchup, robber coverage, buzzing flat, running wheel. Rob's two, excuse me, Rob's two, Rob's three, Rob's four, cloud coverage. All right, he's got the half read, he's got the buzz flat, run wheel, he's got the Rob, he's got the Rob, he's got the Rob. Now remember, we probably have a running back in that, I mean, a free safety in that backer position. In that backer position. Over here, we're going to play cover two, and we're going to squat. Now, one thing I like about this is if he's going quad side, and we're able to keep this kid on the hash, if we're man, as they bring those kids across the field, it is really becoming on this side with these kids man under too deep because they're dragging them to the half player. Kind of like it. Three by two with three into the boundary. <coughs> We're checking 22, playing too deep all over the field. 
I don't like to empty the box a lot, but I will here because this kid will be probably closer to a hip because it's into the boundary. Okay, I would take my tackles and I might pitch them and loop them and run a tom stunt inside and run a tom stunt inside. Four by one into the boundary. Four by one into the boundary. Play 22. Cloud it up. Probably something here. Cloud it up over here. And we will take our bear and let him match to the middle of the field. And let him match to the middle of the field. Haven't done it yet. Haven't seen it yet. Just thinking, what am I going to do when I see it? All right. Here's what I'm thinking. Back in the late 90s, we used to play one cut, which was a man coverage, a man coverage concept against 21 personnel. We liked it, especially in the summer when we'd go to seven on sevens and people would nickel and dime the, sh the bejeebers out of us. And I couldn't stand, you know, getting nickel and dimed in zone. And what's happened is a lot of the game has become that. It's sort of become seven on seven, sort of. So I took this concept of one cut and I'm trying to apply it right now. I don't have all the wrinkles, but I got most of them worked out where we are going to play one cut. Here's how it works. When we play man coverage, we divide the field with a 10 yard divider, top of the numbers. Top of the numbers. If your man is outside of that, you play inside man. You play inside man. If your guy is inside of it, you play outside man. Very important when we're playing man technique. Very important when we play man technique that we're physical and we're challenging routes at the break point. <coughs> Why are we doing it? I, I want to make them, make them throw the good pass. Make him put it in that window this big. Make him compete like you're competing. Don't just drop and say, oh, there's Bobby over there. He's going to catch the ball, go tackle it. Sometimes that pisses me off to no end. Mike is a low hole cutter. Shallow crosses. Free is a high hole cutter. Post help. The more I think about it, I don't think I'm going to play him at the post. I'm going to let him help sit on the dig. And we're going to play a low hole cutter and shallow and a low hole, a, high, a mid hole cutter on dig. And you know what? If they get the post cut off, I'll take that chance. Because that's not the one they practice. They practice dink, 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 dink. So here's how I, I'm, I'm contemplating this. We are, oh, excuse me. We are man, man, and man. Once again, this might be our backup free safety. This might be our backup free safety, our next best available athlete. <coughs> Go ahead, coach. What guy? Play it just as is. Different concept. Different concept. We're playing with a four man line. All right, we're not playing with an extra corner here. Um, here's how we're going to play this we're going to play cut and replace. Anytime, anytime I have a guy inside of me and he can release inside to the mic and I can't stop his release, I pre snap tell the mic rat rat. Which means I'm gonna have I may have someone underneath. And what happens as as he's shallow, he yells rat rat, and as he comes under, we're squeezing man, and he yells cut cut. When he sees the mic start to engage, he comes off his man and comes to be the cutter for the dig. <coughs> now, I think we keep the free safety in and we double whack on that dig. We double whack on that dig. The only thing 
If we keep the free safety on post help, if he's vertical, we got help. And I don't want to give up quick post. But I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good as we swap and replace. So this time, the T's running the shallow, wall, wall, two pushes, or three pushes, <coughs> two's on the dig. And now, when he makes the cut call, he climbs off the shallow and he replaces and cuts it from the backside. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Now they run the shallow and the dig from the same side. If he comes off and he's covering it, his man comes cut, cut, and he's got nothing coming. He's looking for that, and we'll get on the low shoulder of that. If we take the free safety, and we're not worried about post cuts, which I am a little bit, if, and we put him on the dig, we can lock this all down in here. We can lock this all down in here, because what we're doing, what we're doing is we are picking up help when his man comes under and he's cut, he climbs, he's going to flat face the dig from the other side. I want you to think about this if you're coaching your quarterbacks. This kid comes over and gets cut. He's coming and might have the advantage on the dig and he's led into him. Coming from the backside cut. I think it's you, you got a chance to really do some good things. Here we are in a four by one deal, working on concepts with man coverage, tight windows. Kid better be good over here. I think I got a good corner this year. I haven't had one like this guy. He's probably 10, 8, 3, maybe a little better, long strider, fast, physical, 6'1". See, I would think I might want to put my my best corner on their marginal guy. I, I mean, or the whiteout guy, whoever yeah. it might be. Just because I yeah. on an island, you know, what height is. Yeah, I, I'm going to put my and best. And the spread guy might go four to one side and go one on one on the back. That's what we're doing. They like that. That's how we play. We would go slant right there. I'd run yep. a slant on it. Four to one side. Yep. Slant your back side. Yep. And see if we can go to the house with it. Correct. That's why you better have your best kid there and mix your coverage up with that cloud coverage too. Because, you know, I think you, you can get to this. That is the one. Your kid's got to be able to hold up in man coverage. If you can't hold up in man coverage, you can't play man coverage. But I think you have to play it. I think you have to play it. How would you call them? Call them the sidelines? Yeah, that's just, that's, that's one cut. So our signal would be this. That's it. One cut. Now, remember we want to have 33, 33, 33. So this is a new little fire zone concept, which we haven't done before. And it's a different concept because we are going to bring the spur off the edge, drop the stud, and relate him over to three but we're going to be too deep five under. We'll take the stud, plays run first, but there's no threat of run. He engages the tackle and then pops for this area here. We play cover two and bring the bear. What are we looking for? Please rise up and throw hot. Please rise up and throw hot. I like that. This is new. This is new. This is double cross three sink. How new is it? I don't even think I finished drawing it. Okay. Bring the double cross. Try to puncture that bubble. Try to puncture that bubble. Okay. And then we are one, two, three. One, three, stud to the sink to the hole in the middle. I think it's pretty solid. But you got to call them all together. 
You can't line up in one cut and play 50 plays in a row. You got to move between your coverages. You have to move between your zone pressures. You have to get into some man pressures. I, I did draw this one. How about that? A better drawing. There we go. I did get that. Three deep, 300. So we have two fire zones. One's two deep, two under, and one is three deep, three under. Now we go to some man pressures. We just go to our old stuff. Tiger concept. Cover the mic, widen your five, bring the kid off the edge, man it up. Man it up. You got to remember this. Tiger concept is this. If he were to line up into the backfield, our free safety would come off that edge. And they wouldn't have enough to block. We'll take Mike and cover everybody, mug them all, and bring him off the edge. They're missing a guy. They're one short. Well, what do we want him to do? We want him to throw fast. Throw fast. Okay, if we can hold up, play man coverage, hit him in the face. And this one I like too. This is Stifler. It's a double A stunt with the free safety. Free safety has number five. Number five's out. He mans. If number five's in the backfield, he brings it at the edge. And what that is, those are just some quick ideas we have right now in defending the catch and release guys. They're on the board. They not, are not exactly, you know, what we would call time tested, but I think they're pretty good. Questions? No? All right, before I stop talking about defending the spread, I want to take a. This is a, uh, Nate, this is a different segment, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little time to talk about when we run, we play a zone read team. Who plays the quarterback? Okay? And how we determine that. And then I'm going to go way off the board and talk about pistol stuff for just a minute. And that's going to be old school. And Do you have slides for that? No. no. Okay, so we're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to put it up on the overhead. Okay. I did all this for you, Dan. We ready, Nate? How's our time holding up on that tape? Cool. Fitting this up. <coughs> We're going to talk briefly about fitting the zone read. A lot of these things are built in another talk, but I just want to make sure everybody's clear on how we're going to fit this. Concepts of playing the zone read. We're going to always set the tackles to the tailback. The defensive end, who's in tandem with the three technique, will utilize a blood technique and play the quarterback on the zone read. Inside linebackers will continue to key just like they always do. Cross pull the near back. A blood technique it, uh, will come um, the defensive end will come off and strike the target if the offensive tackle strikes him. If the target shows, he strikes the target, plays his hips and gap with regular technique. Ball's being run at him. If the target disappears inside, he is going to step and squeeze. Keep his shoulders square. He's going to squeeze it, and then he's going to pop. And here's what I've learned. If you squeeze... That quarterback can pull the ball and he'll beat you. To, he'll beat you. But if you squeeze, pause, and step up at the last minute, that little bit will help. <coughs> Hardest play for him to make is on the counter play. Our inside linebackers' keys are continue to be cross pulled in your back. We'll read the we'll we'll read the cross pull, and we'll run the crease. If not, we play 31-91. 
Window open with action. We fit the midline. If you get zone read away, now window opens. And the quarterback starts to present. Your gap is threatened. You play that gap. All right, I'll take you through that in a minute. Here's the, here's the zone read. Right here you can see the tackles blocked down. The tackles blocked down onto the three technique. Our willies in a blood. Our willies in a blood. We'll fit there and we'll fit there and the will will play the quarterback. Now, in the midline, if the willie, if the willie blocks the five technique, the guard releases inside, our tackle should close, take the dive, and when he does that, that window opens up. All right? As the mic is reading, he is reading window open, and the quarterback is threatening his gap. Okay? So he has to fit the gap like you would ISO and play the quarterback on the midline. If the quarterback... If the, or the tailback is to the stud side, the nice part about this is we get to fit with the free safety. We get to fit with the free safety. So what happens if the zone read occurs, our stud is playing the quarterback, we like to scooch our spur up right in this kid's grill because our free key is the end man of line of scrimmage back to number two. If he sees if he sees the tackle block down and his eyes flash to two, two's going to engage the spur fast and now my robber can become a seventh guy in the box. And we get some help on the quarterback. Now if they run the midline over here, it's a little bit trickier, but what happens is when he blocks down, our tackle will take the dive and we get the free safety to help onto the quarterback. We would like our backer to help play there, but what happens normally is he overruns it, but the free safety fits because of the robber coverage. Because of the robber coverage. Right there, and then right there. Here's why I put this in here today. Who plays the quarterback in pressure situations? It's really easy, but we don't talk about it enough. So. I thought I'd better put it in. I thought I'd better put it in. Here's to Torpedo 3 Hot. If uh, the tailback's to the torpedo, the torpedo has the quarterback. If he is away, then the stud has the quarterback. Easy. So there's the torpedo, he has the quarterback. And if it's away, he has the quarterback. If we are running back or trade and the, the, the defensive end away, the defensive end away from the stunt has it and the defensive end to the stunt has the blood calls. Double A or double blood. Both our ends have the quarterback if the halfback is to them. The thought is they can't wind it back because of the penetration. They can't run it back because of the penetration. In Stifler, we bring the free safety off the edge to be the quarterback player. Along with the end, we get to double dip it. Psycho, the edge player, has the quarterback. We tell him, if the quarterback is coming to you, do not play like a blind dog in the meat house, jumping around. You have to be in position and under control to play the quarterback. And that's what I put together just to clarify who has the quarterback in the zone range schemes. Thank you. I thought that would be nice just to you know, touch base on that. Yeah. Now we're going to go old school and we'll be done.
old school. With uh, overhead? Yeah. Okay. This is the thing you're talking about, $200 